Okay, so this guide is going to be about how I use digital art and how I approach it. And please stick around, as I think I give out some good art tips for this video. I feel this should be obvious, but it really does need to be stated. Not everyone makes art in the same way. My way of making art might be very different from how you make art, so this video might not be that great for you, but it could be. So keeping this in mind, one of the things that has always really bugged me about art tutorials and videos online about various artists is how they always state their way of art is fact. You must always use references, you must never use references, only use these brushes, only do this or that and so on and so forth. It can get very confusing for a newcomer, especially to digital art, to start and try and absorb all of this. Which is why I really do want to stress that not everything will work out for you. This video is just going to be about what works for me and how it might help you if your style is something similar to mine. Now then, as to the title of the video, Less is More, you might have noticed that my style couldn't be further away from that message. I try to include a lot of detail in my art, using lots of textures and colour. So why did I name the video this? Well, it's for a simple reason, really. I like to simplify the process, not the actual art. I've seen many, many artists have fairly complicated ways to use digital art, such as opacity layers, multiple layers with different colours, and many other different techniques. And while this is all well and good, it can be a bit daunting using all of these techniques and knowing when and where to use them. So for my artwork, I like to keep it as simple as possible, relying almost completely on the brushwork alone. This to me helps make the artwork feel more traditional based. I started out as a traditional artist using paper, pens and paint as my way of making art, but over time I've begun to use Photoshop and digital art more and more, mainly due to I've been able to make it feel more traditional based. That doesn't mean I don't ever use some of the features that Photoshop offers. As I'll show later, there are a few things I like to play around with, but I do limit how much of these I use. I do think that this also might be what makes my art look a little bit more traditional based. So this might help with artists that prefer working in a more traditional sense. This also sounds like it might be a good technique for digital artists that are quite new to Photoshop and various other of the apps. There is a part that does make it harder on myself compared to what I could do. So if you know how digital art works and Photoshop works and various other things, you can actually just fill in various sections with a paint bucket tool and then you have entire parts completely coloured and finished. However, I try to avoid this as I like letting the brush work, have its texture come through, filling the art in with flat covers just doesn't work well for me. So this has both got benefits and negatives, as ignoring some of the features of Photoshop can definitely limit me, but then it does keep it more simplified and less complicated. So what features do I use that Photoshop offers? Other than the obvious one, the undo button, there's a few things that I do like using. The first is the use of the different brush types. Now, I don't create my own brushes, but I do like finding custom brushes by various artists and using them in different parts of my art to get different desired effects. Most of them I use to create really textured effects, but some can give differences to the colours. This really helps to create some sort of fake details, as I would call it. It's a similar technique to how you would put numerous blobs of colour onto a paintbrush and then mix in the colours, well, without mixing the colours together, you would then apply it to the paper and essentially just really gives a lot of noise into the piece and is very particularly good for skin tones. Occasionally I will flip the entire picture of the artwork too. This is something that traditional painters might actually know about. When you're staring at a piece of artwork for hours on end, you can start to sort of get used to the image and sort of not seeing the faults of it. You can refresh your eyes by simply coming back to it later or even just by using a, m a mirror on the physical art piece. But with digital art, one of the things that you can do is you can just sort of flip it over. Try it out sometime, it really does help. <coughs> and my last little tidbit is that at the very end of the artwork, I like to use a trick that adds even more of the sort of fake detail that I mentioned. At the very end of the piece, I'll add a new layer, colour it all grey, and then go to filter and then noise. This essentially gives the art a sort of grainy feel, rather like what you would see in films. It may not be super noticeable, but it does, I feel, just add a little more oomph to an art piece. So yeah, thanks everyone for watching. If you'd like to help support this channel and everything I do, then please do subscribe, ring the bell and all that good stuff. I have an Instagram and other socials you can follow as well as an online store. These can all be found in the description of this video. I never really know how to finish off these videos, so I think I'll just cut it off right about 